Welcome to Play to Win, where we play to win. I'm Dylan. And I'm Cameron. This week we're joined by Mons from CEDH TV. So we thought we'd bring together all of the decks that we're working on right now in the new format. So we have Advantage Thrasios with Akiri, Thrasios and Timna Power Scepter, Kinnon the Dork Lord, and Sisse the Weatherlight Captain with Gigantha as a companion. Begin. Begin. Good luck, everyone. I will draw a card. Windswept Heath. Land for turn. Cracking it. Finding a Temple Garden. Are you okay with me finding that later? Yep. Shocking and casting Elvish Mystic. And then I pass the turn. Alrighty. Go to Cameron's first turn. Wooded Foothills. Fetch it. Buy you. Avacyn's Pilgrim. And then pass the turn. Draw a card. I like how you guys are starting on the Mana Dork train because it makes me feel like I belong. I'm going to start with a Taiga and cast a Noble Hierarch here. I'm going to pass my turn after that. Well, of course, I'm in a deck that just doesn't play Mana Dorks, obviously. <laughs> can Your deck is literally called the Dork Lord. Hopefully you can match us right now. I'm going to play Flooded Strand. I will crack it right away for a tropical island, and I'll play a Birds of Paradise, passing from there. Untap. Drawing a card. Hmm. Marsh Flats. Land for turn. Cracking that thing for a Blood Crypt. Tossing Nagella the Blade Blossom. Pass the turn. All right, coming to cam. We'll play a Tundra here. Cast Timna here, and pass the turn. Untap. Draw one card. Volcanic Island. Faberro Elder. Pass my turn after that. Draw. Greeting pool untapped. Cast Cannon. Tapping birds for two green. Pass the Paradise Druid. Pass turn. Drawing a card for the turn. Watch stage kind of changed. Gaia's Cradle. Land drop for turn. Casting Timna the Weaver. I want to go to combat. So this didn't turn out that well, but we're going to try to... I'm swinging with my Nigella and my Tukken at Dylan. I'm just going to block the warrior token and I'll take three. It dies. I want to go to second main phase. Pay a life. And draw a card with Timna. I'm gonna cause Rakdos Signet by tapping Gaia's Cradle for 1, 2, 3, passing the turn. Coming to Cam's turn, Hollowed Fountain untapped. I too am gonna attack Dylan with Timna. Yeah, I'm not gonna block. Yeah, no, no blocks. Boom, get in there. I'll gain two life, but really only one because I'm going to my second main and I'll draw a card off Timna. I'm gonna cast a Soul Ring and then I'm also gonna cast a Mana Ball. And then I'll pass the turn. Untap, draw a card. Play a Savannah there, cast Thrasios. Past a Biomancer's Familiar. Mons, I'm gonna attack you for three damage. I'll take all the three damage. And then I'm gonna pass my turn. All right, untap, draw. I will play a Cephalid Coliseum and then pass turn. You have seven mana probably. I do. Untap, draw a card for the turn. Let's begin with casting Mox Diamond. Pitching Overgrown Tomb. Land drop for turn, Dark Water Catacombs. Tapping Gaia's Cradle for three green. Tapping Mox Diamond. Casting Cissé, Weatherlight Captain. One green mana floating. I'm activating Cissé, tapping the Blood Crypt to activate the Rakdos, using the black mana to activate Dark Water Catacombs. I got Grixis, white, and I got green. Cissé. There we did it. I'm gonna respond. I'll float three mana with Faber Elder, and I will flash in Aven Mind Sensor. I would like to respond to Aven Mind Sensor. Enlightened Tutor, Isochron Scepter. That's scary. All right, I will search the top four. I actually found something. Sometimes this card is actually pretty scary, but I think it's gonna be fine now. Teferi Time Reveler. I would like to point out that this is going to make it impossible for Isochron Scepter to do anything. We are going to plus Teferi up to five. I'm going to go to combat with only Nigella at Cameron. That makes sense. The token is also coming your way. Pay a life with Timna, and I draw a card. Pass the turn. Oh, look at my draw. Completely useless. Play an island, Thrasios. I'm going to send Timna over at Tyler, I think. Activate Kinnon. I will find a Merrileaf Pixie. Block with Merrileaf Pixie. So Timna and Pixie will trade. That was unfortunate. I will just pass then. I'm going to cast a gamble here for choices. Silence is gone. Cast Zerda, the Dawn Waker. I'm gonna send a 4-4 at you, Cameron. Second main, I will tap for four mana here, the white mana to cast an Enlightened Tutor. I will get a Basalt Monolith and put that on top. Okay, so I have three more mana floating here. I have one mana Thrasios activation, so I'm gonna use them a little bit. Put the Basalt in my hand, scry one, bottom, mental misstep. Scry one, bottom, a Sensei's Divining Top. Cast this Mox Opal that is dead, and then pass my turn. Untap, draw. Play a Snow Covered Forest. Cast Pememzor, targeting Paradise Druid. Can I demonstrate a loop in which I generate infinite green and blue mana? Start activating Kinnon. Eventually find Thrasios, draw the whole deck, cast Walking Ballista, and cast Thassa's Oracle. We're dead. I just want to point out that I was one mana off. I had a handful of counter spells and interaction, which all became useless after Teferi hit the board. <laughs> 
I'm gonna go to 38 and cast a Carpet of Flowers and pass the turn. Draw a card. Let's go for a Misty Rainforest, Lotus Petal, cast a Mox Opal, and pass my turn. I will draw. I'm also gonna play a Misty Rainforest and pass turn. Draw a card for the turn. Shocking to play a Watery Grave, casting a Crow Mox, imprinting a Llanowar Elf. He said Signet, and then I pass the turn. Draw for turn. Green mana off of Carpet of Flowers here, targeting Mons, who has one island. I'm going to cast Thrasios, a Morphic Pool. Pass the turn. I will draw a card. Oh, ah, punished. Okay, how do we recoup them? I'm just going to pass my turn. In your end step, I will crack Misty Rainforest. Go find a Tropical Island. Draw a Waterlocked Grove. Cast Incubation Druid. Pass turn. Draw a card for the turn. Basic Planes into play. Cissé. I want to cast Boreal Druid, and then I'm uh, shipping the turn. We'll go to my turn. Well, that's interesting. All right, we're going to make a white mana carpet of flowers targeting tyler untapped hollow fountain i'm gonna cast a and smothering tithe pass the turn all right i will draw a card can i you may god this has become such an awkward hand okay so fucking a so i'm gonna cast this mox amber my mox opal is now turned on <laughs> but your mox amber isn't yeah, my mox amber isn't i'm gonna fetch with this misty rainforest i'll get a tundra with this mox opal i will make a green like a blue there cast a kinnon Bonder Prodigy. Tap the Mox Amber there for two blue. Crack the Lotus Petal for two white. And I'll, I will cast my own Smothering Tithe. I'm going to pass my turn after that. I have to say, Cameron, I think his Smothering Tithe is better than yours. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> Draw a card. Can I have a treasure? Yes. You may both have treasures. Play a Snow-Covered Island. Cast Kinnon. Two blue with Incubation Druid. Cast a Spellseeker. I'm finding a Pact of Negation. And then I will pass turn. Drawing a card. Can I get a treasure? Can I have a treasure? You yeah, can both have a treasure. Hallowed Fountain into play shocking myself then i am done passing the turn draw can i have a treasure yeah sure carpet of flowers targeting tyler two green play drowned catacomb cast green sun zenith for two i'm going to shuffle green sun into my library kinnon you got three of them out here so we've all decided that kinnon is pretty good is that what i'm getting out of this we've all we all think kinnon's good card yeah Maybe I should get mine too. Also going to cast Sylvan Library. Pass the turn then. Draw a card? Can I get a treasure? You may have a treasure there, bud. Crack a treasure here for two green because of Kinnon. Wow, is that good? I'll cast a Vexing Shusher. Sacrifice another treasure here for two green. And I'll use a blue here. One of that green. Cast a Thrasios. Mox Opal will tap for two white. Mox Amber is going to tap for two blue. Sacrifice the treasure here for two blue mana. Use one of that blue and then i'll cast the basalt monolith so two counter spells would stop that thing that yeah that, that would probably do it all right i'm i'm passing sacrifice a treasure to make two blue tap hollowed fountain for force of negation on basalt monolith i'll use a green to make basalt monolith uncounterable all right anybody Respond. have something for that i will cast pact of negation targeting basalt monolith in response to the vesting shusher trigger i guess let's just uh, make you guys all have it i'm gonna use a blue and a white and i'm going to cast a dovin's veto targeting the pact of negation one white still floating i pass priority on dovin's veto same uh okay i'm going to crack two treasures make four blue mana and activate thrasios Right, that's not what I'm looking for. And what about this? I reveal Ponder. Um, all right, I have nothing now. Basalt Monolith is uncounterable. I will tap Basalt Monolith for four mana and use its ability to untap it. Present a loop to make five billion colorless mana. Am I good to use Thrasios' ability to draw most of my deck? I am going to cast many, many creatures and then cast a finale of Devastation for X equals a billion and attack you all. Do any of you have anything to say about that? With the power of Kinnon. I can win without ever hitting my second land drop. That card is so busted in so many different ways. And it seems like we all agree on that too. We're, these are all of our personal decks and we're all trying to jam Kinnon and get Kinnon out as quickly as possible. I think it, this is showing that the, the new format is turning out to be really nice. Yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a lot. I think Smothering Tithe is really powerful. I think Smothering Tithe's interaction with Kinnon, Treasure's interaction with Kinnon is extremely powerful. I think over that time... specifically, because Smothering Tithe has always been powerful, but that two-card combo now is just a whole other bulb. Let's do it. Turn one. Yavamaya Coast into Lenawar Elves. Pass turn. All right, I will draw a card. Shock in a Breeding Pool, and I'll pass my turn. Draw. I will play a Manamo School at Water's Edge. Mystic Grimoire. Pass turn. Draw a card for the turn. Shock in to play a Stomping Ground, casting a Windhorn Elf. Go. 
fetch it flooded strand underground sea cast a rustic study may i draw a card yes pass the turn all right i'll draw a card i'm gonna play a taiga cast a sylvan library may i draw a card you may may i draw a card you may i'm gonna pass my turn upkeep i will pay for mr kumara draw for turn i will play a command tower cast a mana crypt can i draw a card you may paradise druid can i draw a card no i will use the one floating to pay rustic study pass turn draw a card land for turn Arid misa death right shaman paying for the rustic study pass the turn play a land for turn in the form of a marsh flats thrasios here that that is all that I'm gonna do. Untap. Sylvan Library? I'll take eight to keep all of them. Play an Arid Mesa. I'm going to cast my own Kinnon Bonder Prodigy, which doesn't really do a ton right now, but maybe someday. Can I draw a card? I would really like to keep this mana available here. I'm gonna say yes, you may draw a card. I will pass my turn after that. Go ahead and roll for mana crypt. Taking no damage. And then I will pay two to keep fish alive. Draw for turn. Tarnish Citadel. Cast Gilded Drake. Hold up. You may draw a card. I will target your cannon. I will respond by cracking this Arid Mesa. 28. Get a Volcanic Island. And with the ETB trigger on the stack, I will... Red Elemental Blast, the Gilded Drake. May I draw a card? You may. May I draw a card? You may. Second main, cast a Sylvan Library. Can I draw a card? You may. Pass turn. Draw a card for the turn. Ancient Tomb, taking two damage, casting a Asura Signet. Can I draw a card? Mr. Grimoire Trigger. Paying for the Rhystic Study, not for the fish. Activating Death Rite Shaman, targeting your land over there, Flooded Strand, for a white mana. Cast Cissei. In response to the Rhystic Study, I will crack this, shock into place something, and pay for the Rhystic Study. After that, I'm gonna pass the turn. At the end, cast Brainstorm. May I draw a card? Go for it. I'm also gonna fetch here a white blue land, cast. Enlightened Tutor. Mr. Kamoya Trigger. Power Artifact. We'll go to my turn. Draw this Power Artifact. Play a Morphic Pool. Cast the Silence. May I draw a card? Yes. I will pass on Silence. I am also passing on Silence. I am also passing on Silence. Cast Grim Monolith. And then I can also cast Power Artifact onto Grim Monolith. This will allow me to present a loop where I get to keep tapping and untapping Grim Monolith to make infinite colorless mana. If you're not familiar, I just made infinite colorless mana, drew my entire deck off of Thrax Studios, allowing me to do a ton of shenanigans. Thassa's Oracle being the main one. Power Artifact, that's a that's a unique one. I don't see that one very much in Thrasios decks, but you have it here with Grim Monolith, and it seems like it works there. It's only a four mana, two card, infinite combo. Do you like it? It's okay. So it's a Zerda replacement, almost. The nice part about Zerda is that Zerda does combo infinitely with Basalt Monolith. And that's yeah. kind of another reason why you play it in the deck, not just for the advantage part for Graciosa's ability. Power Artifact kind of does the same thing, except it, it's not as good. Thank you so much to Mons for joining us on the show here. Uh, everyone, if you haven't checked out CEDH TV before, make sure you check them out in the description. And we actually filmed a bonus video with Mons. So if you'd like to check out the fourth game, go to the Patreon right now. Fourth game's live. Go check it out. It's fun. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week. See you later.